Hello, today we're going to have a look at setting up a print layout in MapInfo Pro. We're looking at the 64-bit version and we still have a lot of customers moving from the old 32-bit over to 64-bit and it's quite a bit different. My name is John Ivers, I'm a director here at CDR Group. We're a certified Precisely partner in the UK based in the Peak District. MapInfo Pro. Currently in the year 2020 we're on version 2019. Uh, but the new layout that started back in version 12.5 and each version of course has been improvements but what you also got if you've noticed on the 32-bit was an extra button for the layout designer not just a layout but layout designer and that's what's taken over in 64-bit. What's also been added in version 2019 is the layout templates, which we'll come on to. If you need to get in touch with us, sales at cdrgroup.co.uk. Let's have a look at map info. Okay, we've got some mapping. Orden Survey Master Map. Our main working area. And here in 64, but we've got the ribbons. You'll see a ribbon for layout. So when you're ready to start printing the map area, hit that and hit new layout. We'll start off with a blank template to begin with. Tell you what I'll also do. I'll just split the screen, new horizontal so we can see side by side the map area and our layout area. Slightly different controls here with the slider bar in and out, but also that button to fit the page. So I'm set up for A4 portrait at the moment. Up on our ribbon you've got our page set up to change everything about this. So we've got a blank piece of paper. How do I get that map onto this piece of paper? Well look at the insert area and if you look at the little drop down we could we'd start off and f build a new map from scratch but we want to just bring over the map that's over here. Let's drag that out to a different size. Okay, you may have noticed over in our explorer area or layer, layer control is that we've got two sets of layer controls. The first one is our map area, the window on the right, with all the layers. Shrink that down. Notice there's a slightly different icon at the front. And here, when we switch over, this is the map control, layer control. And what also happened there was the outline went to a blue colour. What this indicates is that the map is now live not just an image on a piece of paper, which means that we can zoom in and start moving this around to wherever we want the map to be. And notice the map isn't moving on the right hand side. This is now divorced. It's not the same map. It's got its own layer control, which also means that we can switch off layers, such as our pipes, sewer pipes that are on there. Switch those back on and construct just precisely where the map is going to be. Click outside and it becomes a, an image in a frame that we can move around. I'm going to leave a bit of room at the bottom here for logo, title, bar, etc. And of course the copyright notice. You also notice the print quality on this is far better than the old 32-bit. It wasn't quite WYSIWYG but this is certainly WYSIWYG. So we can zoom into areas using your mouse if you wish. First off let's put a logo in the corner. You don't have to set up a table. Let's just look at the insert area. Let's go for image. Put our logo straight on. Adjust. What you also got in more recent versions was smart 
snapping so you'll see guidelines come up but there is a grid there that you can uh, snap to and we can align things together but yeah much better insert text okay let's get that all important copyright notice on I'm gonna flip over to word where I've got that plus um, it's a little bit awkward getting that copyright symbol in let's just copy that go back to map info and paste oh it's been in the wrong place I didn't double click and you see the smart guides coming up so let's just place that there you might want some other pieces of text let's put a piece of text from scratch this time eh? perhaps your address details perhaps a website okay how's it going double click to get inside and controls on text much better we can just put the plus sign let's make it bold great let's move that over a bit yeah okay a title again a piece of text that certainly needs to be bigger notice I'm not selecting it I don't have to much better titles will take different uh, lengths and so just being able to adjust that is great I like a scale bar you might have noticed that up here so we've had map we can put a browser in here as well uh, text image scale bars insert frames and other objects but let's go for the scale bar we've got different choices here what's it going to be linked to so we're going to put the scale bar outside the map but in order for the scale bar to know what it's connected to you've got a choice I've only got uh, the one here if you've got multiple maps uh, make sure you're linked the scale bar is linked to the correct one the important one is automatic scaling in other words we get some nice round figures rather than um, decimal places do you want a cartographic scale on there as well maybe we'll put that below and we've got all the controls I'll just say okay for now where's that scale bar gone top so let's go drag that down the bottom I can fiddle around with this for quite a while but um, let's just get these items onto the page so okay um, scale of one to 1015 mm, not exactly the scale I might want to use quite often we go for some set um, rounder scales how do I set my scale in the map window double click get it live so we've gone blue on the border we know it's live now we've got those shortcut menus that you would get in any map window and if we do the change view there's the cartographic scale of 1 to 10 15 let's say to 1 to 1250 see that the map dink and now our scale bar is a bit too big maybe no that's okay still fits double click go back to the settings if you want to make that a little bit shorter let's go for around about four centimeters say okay and so now yeah we've got the basis of a a print yeah we can work on that um, quite often we get quite detailed printouts from people maybe you want a watermark on there perhaps put boxes putting in maybe today's date I'll show you a trick on that shortly but um, 
Yeah, we like that. But now we're going home and I want to save this for tomorrow. Well, this is where a workspace really comes in. So, um, go to home, save workspace as I've got this. I'm going to call it um, layout. So I'm pretending I'm going home tomorrow morning. I want to come in and go to my recent files. And we get back to where we were with map and layout. But of course, tomorrow we're working on a different area. So whilst I set off and move my map to an, another area to work on, why isn't this moved off? Well, actually, you don't need this map anymore. We can work here if you prefer. I would prefer to have both. But um, it also might be easier if I change the name of that. Makes it easier to define where each window is called. So one's called a layout, one's called Chesterfield. If you want to rename that. We can. Okay. I've got my map. Um, yeah. Move the map to a different area. Use your find. Or just navigate to where you want to go. Set the scale. Remember, change view. Let's go for one to a thousand on this one. The scale bar moves with it. And so, great. We've got um, our layout saved in the workspace. We replicate what's going on. That's fine. Okay. Um, what about these layout templates that I mentioned. Well, if we close all that lot again, no, I don't want to save for now. I need to open up my original map. I'll just move, move the legend. That's okay. There's my map. Now I want to put place layout, but I skipped over this, but when you hit layout, there's a blank. But I've set up a couple of uh, layouts here as templates in very much the same way we set up the template earlier, but we saved the template. These are the standard ones that come with map info. We've got an import button there so you can share these templates around. So if you look at these, uh, we've got export template, so you can share that with colleagues. We can delete templates and rename templates. So in this instance, I'm going to choose the A4 portrait. And now there's my lovely map again. There's my logo in the corner. I've put the website address over here and this time I've got a date. Well this time where's that date come from? Automatically whoa there's my map area there's my layout. Let's look at the whole layout. Same way we've got the same controls double click to set that scale. Okay. That's the yogurt bit, isn't it? Remember that it's still active if you want to zoom in on the map. So there's a piece of text down the bottom. Now this is generated today's date because it's not just a piece of text. If you notice, if I double click on it, uh, this is something called smart text. So what you actually put in here, you, what you type in is date, space, dollar, date, and it's in the curly brackets. There's a few of these controls in there. Um, we just click out and it picks up the 
the date uh smart text is another subject matter but if you go to our website and if you look on links uh, then we've got a few web links but we've been pushing out this week's wisdom a little top tips and on there we've got smart text if you want to look for it thematic maps and all sorts print templates smart text number eight and you'll see a little PDF and there's the date and you can have the time and a few other elements there and get quite clever with map basic if you wish so yeah ready to go got to get that scale right scale right it's not linked to the map it is now so there we go easy scale bars there's plenty more to go with all of this you got plenty of controls but um, just a quick video just to show you a way around how to set up a layout thanks very much <laughs>